Hi! Join me today as we make a dynamic and dreamy coral reef. We're going to use multiple techniques and definitely give the definition of mixed media its name. Now, let's dive in. Welcome, Sea Rockers. We are going bigger today on a 14 by 18 board. And I'm gonna start off by putting some texture on it with some modeling paste. Here's how it looks all dried. And now we're ready for some paint. Well, so far in my painting, I've used a catalyst wedge, a paintbrush, and when all else fails, now I'm using my fingers again, straight from the tube. <laughs> the effect I'm trying to get here is basically it's darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, and then we'll go in with some white uh, in uh, a little bit to soften that top up as well. So everything is dried and now I'm going in with my white and I'm gonna take a mop brush or a blending brush and just blend all that out, uh, just circular motions in uh, both directions. And it, it will soften it and give it this really cool kind of ethereal, mystical look. It's like dreamy, that's the best way I can explain it. See, isn't this dreamy looking? I just love it. And once that was all dry, I went in with some more colors to fine tune, add some accents. So I got a wild hair as I normally do, and I decided I wanted to add some uh, cheesecloth to the piece, but I knew that I wanted it stiff because I didn't want it just to dissolve in the paint. So I covered my painting that I had already done with some saran wrap, and then I draped the cheesecloth on top of that, and then I'm gonna take the starch, the liquid starch, and squirt that on there and let that dry. Once that dries, then it'll be in the perfect shape that I want. And as you can see, it's dry and it just peels right off of that saran wrap. And if you thought that was a pretty cool trick, I invite you to splash that like button, click the bell, and get all those notifications that you need to hear from me again. I decided to use a gloss gel medium to adhere it to the piece, mainly because it's very paint friendly and it's designed for this kind of stuff. But didn't this turn out so cool? I just, I'm very excited to use this liquid starch with other things. I just, it, I feel like it's opened doors and ideas to uh, other creations. But whatever you're using your gloss gel medium with, just make sure you let it dry before you go on to your next step. Now the next step for me was to take some pouring medium and some purple mica powders and I mix those up. Then I'm gonna put those on the, um, the cheesecloth. Now, this is one part where I wish I would have uh, not done so much purple on the cheesecloth and let some of the color of the resin uh, color it. But anyway, you know, hindsight's 2020. So uh, next time, I'll keep that in mind. If you're enjoying today's video and you haven't subscribed already, I invite you to do so. While all that was drying, I moved on to another facet of our project, which is some clay. And I knew I wanted to use some clay, but I ended up using a lot of clay, as you'll see at the very end. And uh, anyway, I just went ahead and painted these little buttons and let them dry. And then they got glued onto our piece. After everything was dry, <laughs> it's time for some resin. And I added to this resin some amethyst alcohol ink to give it a purpley 
cute. Actually, it's a little more blue, but whatever. But anyway, we're using art resin today, which I am loving using this resin, by the way. I highly recommend it. And here we go. I also added some translucent iridescent glitter to the resin and it just lends just lends more to the dreaminess effect of this piece. Since there are so many nooks and crannies and unevenness to this piece, I wanted to make sure I got all of them covered. So I went ahead and I double gloved and I just used my hand to spread everything out. It just gives me the opportunity to to feel uh, the I don't know the the texture or whatever I'm using. Eh, it's all a preference, but for me this works. And if you're not aware of the double glove trick, you put two gloves on one hand, the hand you use, spread it with one hand, and take it off. And now you have a clean glove underneath. Be sure to get your bubbles out and then cover it up to keep all the dust and dirt out. Put it to bed. So we've used paint, cheesecloth, clay, and now we're gonna use some hot glue. This is one of my new favorite techniques. I just take a glue gun and it's nothing new, it's out there. It's just, I'm using it, so it's new to me. But uh, anyway, I've got my silicone mat, my pattern underneath, and now I'm just gonna trace that pattern and create a glue a replica of it, I guess you could say, on top. This is definitely one of those very satisfying things to do. You know, it's kind of like coloring where you trace it and then color it in, but it's with glue. And the best part is if you like peeling things, <laughs> once it's all dried, then you peel it off the silicone mat. It's like magic. Seriously. How freaking cool is that? And boom, just like that, we have seaweed. Because I'm a little extra, well, my seaweed had to be a little extra too. So I decided I'm gonna add some gold leaf to this and it is gonna be extra special itself. Now, I would be lying if I said this was a really quick process, so... I'm not gonna lie, and it's not fast. Uh, but anyway, doesn't it look pretty? <laughs> well, I added the seaweed on top of the resin. I added another little piece, and I also added just some interest there at the bottom with some gold, um, some pa gold paint on modeling paste just to break things up a little bit because my idea now is to put a coral reef down at the bottom with clay. In this resin, this second layer of resin, I added some of the uh, purple mica powder to it. Now, I wished I hadn't, again, looking back, but that's what art is about. You know, we, we live and learn in an experiment. I think that's all that art is, is just one big giant experiment onto the next experiment, etc. Anyway, so, Here's our second layer of resin over the top. Again, I'm gonna use my hand to fill in all the nooks and crannies. So here's how our piece looks so far. I think it looks really pretty and the resin adds so much to it, but you know, it's not enough and I have to add more. I could have left it like that, but I wanted to finish my vision. So my vision was to add a little coral reef at the bottom and why not do that with some air dry clay? So as you can see, I've been busy playing with Play-Doh. Well, not really Play-Doh, but clay. And uh, here are some pieces and I'm gonna use those on the bottom. And let me tell you, even though this is a really tedious process creating all these little things, it is so cool. The effect that it gives at the end, it's just very dynamic and you feel like you're underwater. Now, because this is time consuming in itself, the creation process, because I laid this out completely before, then I had to take it apart. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of speed us through. And if you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them.
This is styrofoam balls mixed with modeling paste. And little did you know it was going to be part of a coral reef. This effect is just beyond words. Here's how our finished clay part looks before paint and because the paint process is too difficult to video I'm just going to show you some updates as we finish this off. Our coral reef is finished off with multiple colors and beautiful beads and is for sale on my website. And look at those sparkling glitters and mica powders underneath there. There's so many levels to this piece. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope I inspired you to try something new. I invite you to join the Sea Rocker family. Please like, share, and subscribe with all your salty friends, or even if they're not salty. <laughs> and don't forget to follow me on my other social media platforms. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go beach or go home.